Welcome to 50 Ways to Succeed at Work, where you hear stuff about ways to succeed, even the most well-intentioned colleagues, advisors, careers officers and HR departments may never get around to mentioning. This is episode 22, you being an astute adapter, or why it pays to go with the flow. What does an interruption cost you at work? According to one study, it takes nearly half an hour before you can get back into the swing of things after being interrupted. As part of seeking success at work, take advantage of what we know about the importance of being adaptable and going with the flow. Going with the flow, that's a more familiar way of talking about adaptability. Why bother with flow? Well, because there are actual gains from mastering it that can help you succeed at work. Benefit number one is that you get more done in less time. For example, You're busy with working on something on your computer which announces the arrival of a new mail. As you break off from what you're doing to read it, your nearby smartphone adds to the distraction with a notification from WhatsApp. Time for coffee? Now your whole train of thought is busted. The news about this happening is not good. People switch between media content on a single device every 11 seconds. Benefit number two of mastering flow is that you're likely to make fewer errors. It's tempting to deal with interruptions by working faster. But guess what? This only causes you to make more mistakes. Benefit number three is that mastering flow reduces stress. Distractions don't just waste your time. They also affect your mental state. Losing focus can cause you to be irritable with a constant feeling of being under pressure. Therefore, working at your best means finding the balance between busyness and focus. That's not easy if you're on a help desk or expected to drop everything in response to a demand from a teammate or a supervisor. Flow is where you become involved and thoroughly engaged in an activity, and it's a highly desirable and highly productive state to be in. If you play very involving computer games, you probably know how it feels. You can't achieve flow by constantly switching between software and devices, looking at different screens, monitors, phones, and even smartwatches. So what do you need to do to extract those benefits from mastering flow? There are some simple steps to take while staying flexible and adapting to changing circumstances. These steps include establish clear goals to know in detail what you need to achieve and when. Once you know what you need to achieve, it's easier to get into the flow. Clear goals help you know if you're completing a task or not. If you struggle to get clear goals, start by checking how your regular work relates to team and company objectives. Next, deliberately reduce distractions. While you're getting into the flow, distractions can do what they usually do. They prevent you from having the mental clarity needed for a flow state. However, once in a flow state, your brain will resist distractions. Until you're in the right frame of mind, reduce those endless distractions. Next, cut multitasking. Did you know that one of the most persistent myths about work is that you can multitask? This contradicts everything we know about the brain. If you multitask, you're not doing two things at once. Instead, you're forcing your brain to switch between two or more things at once and do it rapidly. According to research, many workers feel pressure to multitask during the day. So stop multitasking and concentrate on the real task at hand. Next, use peak periods. You have these when you're being highly effective and others when you're not at your best. For example, you may be efficient from seven in the morning until midday when you start to run down. Or you need the morning to recharge your batteries before getting into overdrive later. Find what works best for you, then use this to experience and create the flow state. And finally, don't force focus. If you're not feeling in the flow right now, that's okay. You can still get great work done by reducing distractions. Do some of these things I've described, and you'll feel more in tune with and able to control your emotions. You'll be more satisfied with your work and confident that what you're working on is achievable. These feelings will actively contribute to your longer-term success. So what action am I proposing? Well, first, treat distractions as inevitable. 
but often avoidable. Find your peak time of effectiveness and kill all distractions to promote flow. And thirdly, avoid being too passive and always going along with what others want you to do. And my takeaway from all of this? Flow is a state of mind and part of what makes you highly productive. Invest in what creates it by reducing distractions and avoiding multitasking. You've been listening to an episode of Andrew's 50 Ways to Succeed at Work. For more episodes, subscribe free to my regular weekly podcasts. You can catch up on past ones at the 50ways.site, where you can also become a foundation member with access to e-learning units, transcripts, further reading links, and the forum where you can ask questions, share problems, and join a growing community of people who seriously want to succeed at work. Thanks for listening, and bye for now, until next week.